Okay, first thing I need you to do is in your note cards, that purple box, page 170, and then 171, put those in your note cards. Go ahead and do that. All this is saying, if I have any segment, okay, <clears throat> and I have a perpendicular bisector to that segment, Now, perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector means two things. Again, when you learn any language, math is a language, you have to know definitions. What does perpendicular mean? It makes 90 degrees. What does bisector mean? Cuts into two equal parts. Okay, so... If I told you this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, if I said AB is the perpendicular bisector of CD, we know one thing right off the bat. What do we know? We know two things are equal. What two things are equal to each other? If AB is the perpendicular bisector of CD, what do I know? I know that CB has to be congruent to DB. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. Because that's what it means to be a bisector. So I know this is congruent to this without doing anything else. But what you now also know is, let's use that, if I put any point whatsoever on the perpendicular bisector. It doesn't matter whether it's, let's start here. Let's call that, well, let's change, no, we'll do that. Let's call this, let's call that point F. Is point F on the perpendicular bisector? So the distance from point F to C and point F to D that has to be congruent as well, okay? It doesn't matter where F is, as long as it's on the perpendicular bisector, then the distance from that point to each endpoint has to be the same. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. So, okay, knowing that, if I had told you that, we'll make this easy to start with, if I told you that the distance from B to D was three, and the distance from F to B is four, what would the distance from F to C be? See if you can figure it out. The perpendicular part means that this is 90 degrees, correct? Mm -hmm. Which means it's a right triangle. What theorem do you know that has to deal with distances and right triangles? Bob. Bob's theorem, Pythagorean theorem, which says what? A squared, a squared plus B squared equals... So, now, this was an issue last year's geometry class because, just because, I did a lot of head banging sometimes. Which side is always C on a right triangle? The hypotenuse, but which side is the hypotenuse? The what? The side across from the right triangle, or the right angle. Okay, so if this is the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. If this is the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. If, if this is my right triangle, if this is the right angle, then that is the hypotenuse. The longest side of a right triangle is always the hypotenuse. Just as long as you know that. Because you'd be amazed how many times people plugged in numbers the wrong place. Okay, which you might see here in just a second. I gotta figure this out. Okay, so. If I told you that this was 3 and this was 4, 
I could say 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. That'll give me that side, right? So 9 plus 16 equals C squared. 25 equals C squared. Take the square root, take the square root. Square roots and squares cancel each other out, so C is equal to 5. And if that side's equal to 5, what do I know about this side? It's also 5. So FC is 5. Okay. So if I gave you something like this, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just making this up as I go. And we'll call this A, B, C, D, <clears throat> and F. <clears throat> the reason I don't ever use E, you rarely use E, is E is a number, a very specific number like pi, but you won't learn that until next year. Okay, so I'm going to tell you that AC is the perpendicular, I'm abbreviating, bisector of db okay and let's say no no i gotta figure this out what do i want to do is that, is that db? that's db oh my gosh fine d b there is that better yes okay now, let's say I gave you AB is, oh, let's go, we'll start easy. Let's say AB is 20. Let's go. FD is 12. I want you to find a F, please. Okay, go ahead and go. Okay, so if I know AB is 20, I know this is 20. And I know if this is 12. What do I know about this length and this length? Because that's what it means to be bisector, right? Yeah. So if that's 12, then this is 12. Okay, they want to know what this is. I want to know this distance here, so I'll just call it X. So I know that this is my C, because it's across from the right angle. So I'll write it this way. So I won't call it F. I'll just say the distance from A to F squared, that would be like my A squared, plus B squared equals c squared, correct? Mm -hmm. So this is 144, this is 400, correct? AF squared, so AF, the distance from A to F squared is equal to minus 144, minus 144, what do I get? Take the square root, take the square root, the distance from A to F is, now, the reason why I say this is this, okay? I'm going to digress. Give me five minutes. You should know that a 3, 4, 5 is a perfect right triangle, mm -hmm. okay? Which means that any multiple of 3, 4, 5 is also a right triangle. Mm -hmm. So if this was 20, the hypotenuse, just like that's the hypotenuse, so this is the hypotenuse, right? And then I had a 12. What did I multiply 5 by to get 20? What do I multiply 3 by to get 12? What do you think I'm going to multiply 4 by? And what am I going to get? Hmm, I could have got 16 without doing any math whatsoever. So, if 3, 4, 5 is a perfect right triangle, if I times everything by 2, a 6, 8, 10 is a perfect right triangle. 
If I times everything by 3, a 9, 12, 15 is a perfect right triangle. Okay? And any multiple thereafter, does that make sense? Okay? Just like a 5, 12, 13 is a perfect right triangle. So a squared plus b squared is c squared, which means any multiple of that is a perfect right triangle. Now, why is that important? Back before they were surveying, do you ever wonder how, have you ever been into a building, an old, 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 old building, maybe that like a log building or something that maybe has been there for a long time, maybe there was an home, old homestead or something. Ever wonder how back in the day they made their home square? Yeah. Okay. Did you, so, well, I do because it's fascinating to me. Okay. And I've done this before. If you didn't survey and you wanted and you're building something, even if you're making a garden and you want your garden to be square and not be all weird angled, if you plant a stake wherever you want one corner, now let's start easy. If I measure three feet this way and I measure four feet this way, if this is a perfect 90 degree angle, what does that distance have to be? If this is three and this is four, for this to be a perfect 90 degree angle, this has to be five. If it's not exactly five, that angle is not perfectly 90 degrees. It's not a perfect corner. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So obviously you don't want to use, if you're making a big garden or making a big building, you don't want to just use a three, four, five. So if I'm making a building, let's like, 50 feet by 100 feet, and I want it to be square, if this is my corner, okay, maybe instead of using this, maybe I'm going to use a times everything by 10, 30, 40, 50. So if, here's my stake, and I measure 30 feet this way, and I measure 40 feet, let's say I measure 40 feet this way, because I think it's square, so this is 30, this is 40. If this was going to be a perfect right angle, this would have to be 50. But let's say I measured it, and it only comes out to like 48 feet. Is this angle 90 degrees? No. No. What would I have to do with this stake? Move it down. Move it down a little bit until I get this measurement to be 50. And then if this is 30, this is 40, and this is 50, I know that corner has to be a perfect 90 degrees. Okay, one of the benefits of Bob's theorem. Okay, just so you know. All right, I digress. Okay, let's say, let's go back to this picture here. Let's say I told you that, let's see how smart we are. Let's say I told you that CF, CF is the square root of 7, okay? And let's say CD is 4. I want to know DF. It's no longer 12, by the way. New problem. What would DF be? Okay, go ahead and go. So, if CF is this, so I have, if I'm doing A squared plus B squared equals C squared, does it matter which one's A and which one's B? No. No, only thing that matters is which one is C. C is always the hypotenuse, correct? Mm -hmm. So in this case, if I'm talking about this triangle right here, let's do a different color. To make it stand out. Let's say I'm talking about this, that didn't help. We're talking about this triangle right here, right? And if this is 4, that's my hypotenuse, so that goes into there, then it really doesn't matter. Okay, we can go a squared plus the square root of 7 squared, correct? Mm -hmm. Which is a squared plus, what's the square root of 7 times the square root of 7? 7. Seven. 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 The square root of anything times itself is just itself. So the square root of 10 
times the square root of 10 is just what? 10. The square root of x times the square root of x is? Keep that in mind. That's a tool you want to put in the tool shed. Okay? So a squared plus 7 equals 4 squared, which is 16. Subtract 7, subtract 7. a squared equals 9, so a is 3. Okay. For the most part, I think that's about it. So let's go to page 174. We are in section 4-4. We are going to do 5 through Let's just go 5 through 16 all. Okay, 5 through 16 all. Okay.